states, who preserve pure conduct and well. Together with gentle people, who are patient and have no anger, are firming their intentions and always hold meditation in high regard, who attend profound sandy and make vigorous efforts, persevere in all good practices, whose wisdom is keen and who answer difficult questions skillfully, O Asaita. Those sons and daughters of a virtuous family, who preserve and recite this sutra after my karma will attain good qualities like those mentioned above. You should know that such people have already set out for the cares of enlightenment, are near to highest, complete enlightenment, and are seated under the Bodhi tree. Oh, a Saita. Wherever these sons and daughters of a virtuous family sit, stand, or walk, there a monument should be built, and all of the devas and humans should pay homage to these monuments as they would do to those of the Buddha. Thereupon the Bhagavad. Wanting to elaborate on the meaning of this, further spoke these verses. 241, 46a, the Lotus Sutra. If after my paramarva there are people who preserve this sutra, they will have immeasurable merits. As described above, such people have already given various kinds of offerings. They have built stupas for the relics, adorned with the seven tracers, with a pole on the top which is very tall and thick, gradually tapering upward until it reaches the Brahma world. These stupas have been adorned with thousands of myriads of coins of jewel bells that ring with beautiful sounds as the wind blows. For immeasurable kalpas such people have revered these stupas by offering flowers, incense, necklaces, heavenly garments, and various kinds of music, while burning scented ointments and butter, oil lamps, which illuminate them on all sides. In the troubled world of the decadent Dharma, those who preserve this sutra, will have already finished paying homage in the way just described. If they can preserve this sutra, it will be as if they had paid homage in the presence of the Buddha and had built monasteries for monks out of sandalwood from Mount Oxhead and thirty two buildings as tall as eight trees and offer delicious food, excellent garments, bedding, hundreds of thousands of dwellings, gardens, ponds, paths for wandering and meditation caves, all of fine quality. 242. Chapter 17 Those who have the thought of willing acceptance, who preserve, recite, copy, or move others to copy this sutra, and who pay it homage by scattering flowers, incense, and scented powders on it, 
and by constantly lighting lamps up. Fragrant oil made from Sumona's flowers. Campaker wood, anything mother grass. Those who pay it homage in this way will attain immeasurable merit. Their merit will be as limitless as empty space. How much more is the merit of those who preserve this sutra, who carry out the practice of giving dina, good conduct, love, perseverance, nti, and meditation, dhinna, who never get angry or slander others, who honor monuments, and are humble before monks, and who are free from pride, always contemplate wisdom, never get angry at difficult questions, and teach in accordance with the questioner as capacity. If there is anyone who can carry out these practices, their merit will be immeasurable. If one were to see such an expounder of the Dharma, who has perfected merits like this, one should scatter heavenly flowers over him and provide him with heavenly garments. Bow until one as for it touches his feet and think of him as if he were a Buddha. Furthermore, one should think that before long the expounder of the Dharma 243, 46, the Lotus Sutra will approach the terrors of enlightenment attain the unconditioned state of non-corruption and extensively benefit devas and humans. Wherever he dwells, walks, or sits, or recites even a single verse, a stupa should be built, made beautiful with adornments, and paid homage in various ways. Wherever the heirs of the Buddha may reside, there the Buddha himself will take pleasure in its use, and will always be wealthy, walking and sitting within. 244. Chapter 18. The Merits of Joyful Acceptance. Narapam Bodhisattva Mosatva Maitreya addressed the Buddha, saying, O oh, Bhagavad, if sons and daughters of a virtuous family rejoice in hearing this sutra, how much merit do they acquire? And he spoke in verse, saying, After the Bhagavad, as Karan Burfa, if there is anyone who hears this sutra and rejoices in it, how much merit do they acquire? Then the Buddha addressed Bodhisattva Mosattva Maitreya, saying, O oh, Asaita, after the Tathagata, as Karanurva, suppose those monks, nuns, Lenmen and then women and other wise ones, whether old or young, happy. Rejoiced in hearing this sutra, take leave of the Dharma assembly and go to other places, either dwelling in monasteries or tranquil places, cities, towns, villages, or forests and teach what they have heard to their parents, relatives, good friends, and acquaintances according to the
of various capacities. These people, having heard the teaching, they will rejoice and go on to teach it to others. These people, having heard it, will also joyfully teach it to others. In turn, and so it continues in this way until it reaches the fiftieth person. Oh, Asaita. I will now explain about the merit which this fiftieth son or daughter of a virtuous family acquires from joyful acceptance. You should Listen attentively. Suppose that in the four hundreds of myriads of coins of incalculable worlds, there are sentient beings in the six transmigrator estates and of the four modes of birth, born from an egg, born from the womb, from moisture, or born spontaneously either with or without form, either with or without consciousness, either unconscious or not unconscious, having no laps, two, four, or many laps, and that, among the number of such beings, there is a person who seeks to acquire merit and gives pleasurable things to 245 46C The Lotus Sutra These beings, according to their desire, He gives each of those sentient beings Gold, silver, lapis lazuli, mother, of, pearl, agate, coral, amber and other tracers such as would fill this continent of Jamatha, as well as elephant carts, horse carts, and palaces and towers made out of the seven tracers. Having performed such acts of giving for a full eighty years, this great donor thinks I have already given these sentient beings such pleasurable things as they wish. Yet now these sentient beings are old and feeble. They are over 80 years old, with white hair and wrinkles, and they will die before long. He should now instruct them by means of the Buddha, Dharma. He immediately gathers these sentient beings together, inspires them by proclaiming the Dharma, and gladdens them by revealing its benefits. In an instant they all successively attain the first stage of the Vakas cult, Stream, Winner, Srota, Panna, the second stage called Once, Returner. Sak, Min, the third stage called Now, Returner, Enmin, and finally, the stage of the Arhat, free from corruption, entering profound meditations. Gaining complete mastery of all, and attaining the eight liberations. What do you think about this? Has this great donor acquired abundant? Married or not? Maitreya addressed the Buddha, saying, O Bhagavad. The donor has married is extremely great, immeasurable and limitless. Even if this donor had only given all those pleasurable things to sentient beings, the merit would have been immeasurable. How much greater is this donor as merit after having 
caused them to attend our hipship. The Buddha addressed Maitreya, saying, I will now clarify this for you. This person has given all these pleasurable things to the sentient beings in the six states of existence in four hundreds of myriads of coins of incalculable worlds, and enabled them to attain our hardship. The merit he has attained cannot be compared with that of even the fiftieth person who, after hearing even a single verse of the Lotus Sutra, received it with joy. It would be even less than a hundred, a thousand, a hundred thousand of a myriad of a coin of that person as merit. Oh, a shaita. In this way the merit attained by even the fiftieth person who rejoiced in hearing this Lotus Sutra is immeasurable, limitless, and incalculable.